action. Action. Okay. Hello, Hungarian wine fanatics or wine fanatics out there in the world. Uh, I'm Gabor and I'm John, and we are at the tasting table in uh, Budapest, and we are going to taste and talk about uh, uh, three of our favorite wines. And uh, well, Taste Hungary uh, and Tasting Table are uh, a wine tasting place here in Budapest. We also import uh, Hungarian wine to the United States and uh, have a Hungarian wine club. And uh, we also sell Hungarian wine all across the EU. I'm one of the owners. And uh, the special uh, touch with John is that John was born in Ohio. Correct. And uh, he's been living in Hungary for a fairly long time. And his Hungarian is as perfect, maybe even more perfect than mine. It's incredible. After two glasses of wine, anybody can be fluent. That's <laughs> the, the trick. Yeah. Yeah. So um, we do a lot of tastings here, practically every day. And uh, uh, the company focuses on uh, local indigenous grape varieties. Uh, although today we are focusing uh, on, a, on a originally French variety called Cabernet Franc that found a real home here in, in Hungary. And uh, it's grown all over the country pretty much. But this one is from the Eger region. Maybe, John, you could say a few words about Eger. Yeah, absolutely. So I mean, with Eger, volcanic soil region in the northeastern corner of Hungary. So relatively cool climate. The most famous style is going to be a, is going to be a, a blend of several different grapes. Uh, Hungarian yeah, red blend that's called Bull's Blood. I mean, we call it Bikovér in Hungarian. That's going to be the most well-known style, along with some other yeah, red grape varieties, both international and Hungarian ones. But that's not to say they don't make white wines as well. Thank you. Yeah, so this uh, particular one is coming from the Havas and Timar winery. Uh, both of these reds are available in our bo both in our EU and in our US web shop. So it's uh, I'm so proud of that actually because uh, um, through the 15 years of you know business that we have been uh, uh, doing, we were able to set up uh, uh, you know the licensing and the logistics of being able to ship small batch uh, you know small producers wines very high quality all over the EU uh, and almost all over the US. So I'm um, cheers to that. Absolutely. And I'm really, really glad that this is now also available in the States because this is this is one of the first wines that got me in here when I was a guest. Is it so, it? Yeah. Really? So yeah, it was um, end of towards the end of 2020 uh, when we could finally go outside again. I came for mm -hmm. some wine tastings and then, you know, the story went from there. I first started as a guest and then after a couple of years I needed the employee discount and so I started <laughs> working here as a sommelier, as you remember. So <clears throat> it all started with Frenum. Yep. And it all started with Havas and Timar. It's a joint venture between yeah, two guys who were actually childhood friends. So they were best friends from a very young age. And even throughout their adult life, of course, you know, as you get older, it doesn't hurt to <laughs> taste some wines and, and enjoy that, you know, enjoy the fun parts of being an adult. And so that's what they did after some experience of yeah, working in hospitality and studying a little bit about, well, more than a little bit about winemaking, they said, okay, let's, let's make our own. Um, and then as far as these three and this, this whole name, Franum, uh, we should probably look into the linguistics behind Please, that because it's a little, it, a little yeah. bit of an odd, odd name that doesn't really make sense to at first sight. But yeah, it's going to be a kind of a, a mashup of French and Hungarian language. So in, in French, when I pronounce the grape Cabernet Franc, they don't put the C on the end. They leave it off. So it's more like Franc. Yeah. But then they wanted to make a Cabernet Franc that was very specific to the style that they like. They said, that, well, I want to be able to say this is my Cabernet Franc. And so the Hungarian suffix for saying that something is mine, first person possessive would be yeah, either O-M or E-M. So if you ever have a word that's ending in om or M, uh, it's going to be, yeah, mine. So my from, my Cabernet from. So he's not only a wine uh, geek, he's also a language geek. Just a geek. It just really, came just, out. Just a it just came out. Yeah, well, you know, got to read it back in. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on with this one? So give, yeah. give us a quick word. So vintage 2019. Uh, 100% Cabernet Franc. Cabernet Franc has this uh, beautiful sort of chocolate, chocolatey aroma, uh, cocoa powder aroma, uh, along with uh, uh, from the long barrel aging, uh, and also this this is now five uh, year old wine, so a good amount of bottle aging as well. Uh, it developed uh, these uh, secondary and tertiary aromas. Uh, it's it is still very fruity, lots of blackberry. Uh, but also 
uh, yeah, a little bit of uh, the, the 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 horse horse uh, stable uh, smell in the background. I know it doesn't sound good, but as a package, it's 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 really beautiful. Not everything in moderation, right? Good, uh, and, and in this one, everything is in moderation, right. and that's what makes it perfect. It's a big wine without being overwhelming. So nice depth, nice long finish. Lots of fruit in it, good acidity, a tiny bit of minerality from the from the uh, agar region, and uh, it is one of my go-to uh, red wines. It's, I have a couple of different vintages of it sitting at home right now, so I mean, I I don't have any trouble telling people how much I love this. I can recommend that always, yeah. good conscience. And one thing I would also add on is that yeah, it's unfiltered, so that's oh, yeah. that's going to add a lot more of that juiciness and a lot more of the intensity without necessarily giving you that weight and the, the smokiness that comes with really, really heavy oak aging. Well balanced all around. Yeah, beautiful, fully ripe. You get fruit in this, but it also comes along with, with this undertone of uh, this steely, uh, dusty minerality, which for food pairing, um, what's the go-to? Honestly, this um, is a very versatile wine. Uh, I enjoyed it with pizza the other day. Easy. Barbecue. Uh, the stews, it would be great. Anything meaty, anything with a lot of a lot of protein, a lot of carbs, a lot of fat. Oh, yeah. A lot of these Hungarian dishes, anything with a little bit of a... Yep, thank you very much. Uh, one, one more thing that is really interesting about this venture is that these guys only have 1.5 hectares of, of vineyards that they own and work with. Uh, so that would be not enough to make um, the amount of bottles uh, that they produce. So they buy grapes from really reliable producers. And I think that's a very smart business model. Yeah, definitely. And they, they also like to be involved in the, on the agricultural side very much. So they're not just having other people do the, you know, the manual labor for them. They're, so I think that's another big reason that they haven't gotten more of their own land is they want yeah. to yeah. maintain the, the oversight of everything they do, which is, I think, a fantastic yeah, practice for a winemaker. Um, Go for it. Sure. I mean, from just from the first sniff, much more intense, mm -hmm. much more going on, much bigger wine. Yeah, this one clocks in at 13.5% oh, yeah. alcohol, that's 15. So as far as like structural components, that's going to be hitting much heavier. <clears throat> and yeah, they, they put the, the term on the front board, Lovalo Gatash, which of course mm -hmm. translates to barrel selection. And that's exactly what this is. So it's going to be um, coming from three different barrels. They kind of pick the, the ripest and the most developed grapes that they're going to be using to make this style of wine and then they yeah they aged that in three different barrels um, if i'm not mistaken it was yeah one first use barrel and two second use barrels mm -hmm. uh, french oak uh 225 liters uh -huh. so small so the classic bordeaux barrels i guess classic, bordeaux size giving barrels. you that you know that, that bombastic kind of structure to the wine lots of lots of wood tannin um lots of lots of just very very developed and very very full flavors but it had time to integrate. It's like this yeah, wine yeah, yeah. is is one. Uh, it's from 2018. Right. Everything is is again in perfect harmony. Uh, nice chewy texture. Uh, much more tannin. Much, much more, more tannin. and much more of these like like these mold wine spices mm -hmm. like cloves. You know whether it's cloves or nutmeg or cinnamon, all of these um, perfect kind of kind of flavors that that go really, really well during the cooler weather season. Mm -hmm. Or when you're somebody who wants a very, very big um, red wine, or let's say you're used to drinking California Cap Sev. Mm -hmm. This is gonna be something that comes up right along those same lines. Big wine, a bold wine, some, that's where we bring in the steak for food pairing, something much meatier and much heavier. Yeah, I was gonna ask. So this is your steak wine? Easy, easy. So, so, yeah, I mean, or, or the kind of wine when, honestly, if you just had a rough week, <laughs> <laughs> and, and you want to close the doors and and um, end the week, just say the word that, okay, I don't want to know about anything else, but this one and this one. Absolutely. Right and on, on both of them, I, I get this, there's always this herbaceous side to Cabernet Franc, so you get a little bit of this like green pepper, maybe a little bit of like, um, even, oh, yeah. even something more along the lines of like mint or some, some green herbs. We're not completely losing that herbal side, but... You know, this one being a little bit lighter allows it to cut through a bit more, while this one kind of allows it to take a background. We didn't get a third glass. We didn't get a third glass. I opened the wine, you get the glasses. We're going to have to cut this. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back. Yeah, so this is going to be the, uh, the odd one out. The white, the white wine made from red grapes, Cabernet Franc. 
And how do you even do that? You want to harvest these grapes during a very cool part of the day. Um, very, very minimal amount of time transporting them from, you know, from the vineyard into the production site, keeping them at a nice cool temperature mm -hmm. not allowing them to get crushed by being very, very careful with the whole transportation of, of the grapes. Once we get them into the press, very, very uh, slow, very, very gentle press. Again, we don't want to extract the color. We don't want to extract the flavor from the skins. There are, you know, there are other styles of wine. There are other grapes that are really common for this. I've definitely met with a couple of, um, uh, yeah, white Pinot Noirs from, mm -hmm. from Washington State, from Oregon. But um, Cabernet Franc is pretty rare to find it. Yeah, so I think this is the art and the craft of, of winemaking that from the very same grape variety, you can make a white wine by quickly removing the, the skin uh, and the juice or, or separating them. And you can make this really heavy uh, red by just long, long skin contact. Okay, well, the only sad news is that the white cap franc is only available in the EU. Uh, these first two are available in the EU and in the US. And then the, the last one is only in the European Union. <laughs> American friends, please come over here in person to pick this wine up, okay? We can't ship that to you yet. Thank you so much. Cheers. Cheers. Egeshe. Egeshe.